Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about encoder and decoder layers. So we'll put everything together and see how it works on a grand scale. Now, here is the architecture that we've discussed in lots of detail in different aspects of it so far. And today we're going to put it together. We're going to look at these two NXs and how it all combines to create the transformer. How many layers come together to create the transformer. So here is uh, the encoder and this is the first layer of encoder. So nothing special here. As we discussed, the inputs come in, go through the multi-head attention, then layer normalization residual connections, the feed forward, layer normalization residual connection again. and But then instead of that output of the encoder going into the decoder, this goes into another layer of uh, the encoder and then another layer and another layer and so on. And in total, there'll be NX uh, layers or N layers of the encoder stacked on top of each other. Now, the important points here are that uh, the original paper has six layers, but you can have as many as you like, uh, layer, layers as many as you like. Uh, for example, you could have dozens or hundreds of layers. It's up to you how you create the architecture. These layers are sequential, so the input or output of one goes in as the input of the other. And note that encoder layers are independent. Each of them has its own set of weights. It's very important. And this is what allows the transformer um, to enhance further and further and further enhance that context, those contextual vectors that it's creating inside each one of these uh, layers of the encoder. Now on the decoder side, we have as usual, our first layer of the decoder. And as you can see, we've got that uh, cross, uh, cross attention, multi-head cross attention. Well, the input for that from the encoder side is the final output of all of the encoder layers. So the, all of the encoders process these vectors and then the final, what we get from the final encoder, that goes into the first decoder. Then the output of the first decoder layer goes into the second decoder layer. And at the same time for the cross attention, we use the same vectors that we got at the end of all of the encoders and so on and so on. And again, we have lots of layers of the decoder. Uh, then we've got this final one. And after the final one, we've got the linear transformation and the softmax as we saw in the transformer architecture. So that only comes at the very, very end to create those probability distributions that we need. Again, there's N layers here of the decoder. That number is up to you, can be dozens, can be hundreds. In the original paper, it's six. And note here that the decoder layers are independent of each other as well uh, because they have their own sets of weights. Again, that is designed so that the transformer can learn and further enhance those context aware vectors and do different things in these different layers, have more flexibility. So that's what the architecture looks like uh, from a bird's eye view. Let's look at a few vectors going through this architecture. So we're going to look at an example of translation from English to Slovene, and we're going to be talking about this during inference, but of course the same principles apply during training, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just talk about it during inference. Uh, here's a sentence, this boy likes to learn with the end of sequence token at the end. So what will happen is all of this input will go through goes input into the encoder stack it'll go through all of the encoder stack so it'll go through all of them sequentially one by one and then at the top over there we'll have the encoder output and as discussed previously this will happen only once very important to keep in mind this just happens once because there's no point in it doing it again the vectors are not changing nothing is changing about well the words the input is not changing nothing is changing about it so it just saves computational time or processing time um, by just keeping that output and then reusing it rather than regenerating it again, again, again for every step in the decoder. So that's what happens in the encoder. And then in the decoder, we're generating our translation. Let's say we've translated uh, three words so far, ta fan se, and we're uh, translating, <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that well, uh, but yeah, we're translating now the fourth word or generating the fourth word. So remember, translation for transformers is still a generation task. So all of this uh, output that we have so far will go into the uh, decoder. Well, that input area of the decoder will be in, it will be inputted into the decoder. Um, and then it will go through this first part of the first layer of the decoder where it will be combined with the 
encoder output in that cross attention part of that uh, layer of the decoder. Then it'll keep going, go into the second layer, and again, again, all of, of course, all of these you know, feed forward will happen, the residual connections and layer normalizations, the self attention, so on, and then it'll get to the cross attention again, and again, it'll be combined with the encoder output in the cross attention there, and so on and so on, and then it'll get to the final layer of the decoder, get combined with the encoder output one more time, and then go through to the end and go through that uh, linear transformation and softmax. We'll get the probabilities. So we'll, each one of these, um, there'll be 200,000 probabilities or however many words there are in the Slovene language or tokens to be more precise. Um, that many probabilities will be generated from each one of the vectors. So we have four vectors here, uh, one for each one of the words that we have in the generate output. But we're, as we discussed previously, we're only interested in the, in the probabilities that are coming from the last word, from se. And based on that probability, we'll be able to generate what's the next word. We'll take the word with the highest probability in that uh, distribution. And uh, we will generate the next word, which in this case will be rad. And so on, the process will keep repeating like that. A couple key takeaways from today and uh, actually three main takeaways. First one is that even though the transformer architecture only shows one layer of the encoder and one layer of the decoder, in reality, there's many layers and that NX symbol simplifies, signifies that. In the original paper, there's six, but it's up to you as the architect to decide how many layers you would like. The second takeaway is that the encoder output, as we discussed previously, just goes through the encoder once and it stays here. And the third takeaway is that then this encoder output, that the encoder output from the final encoder, that is what is used across all of the decoder layers like that. So there we go. That's how it works. Uh, here's a great blog if you'd like some additional reading. It's by J.L. Lamar, a very popular blog called The Illustrated Transformer. I recommend checking it out. And I believe there's a video uh, in the blog as well that accompanies this blog. So there's some additional, additional source of information for you. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.